These are the answers to the Algebra Regents exam, August 2018, multiple choice. In question number one, the number of bacteria grown in a lab can be modeled by this equation, um, which, where T is the number of hours. Which expression is equivalent to that? All that you want to see is which one matches it. So again, just type this into the Y equals and see which graph is exactly the same. What it is is choice number two. In question number two, which table represents a linear model? Linear means that you're adding or subtracting by the same number each time. So you can see in this one, you're adding by five each time, where in this one, you're adding by different numbers in two, three, and four. So because you're adding by the same number each time, that's gonna be linear. So it's choice number one. Um, which one correctly factors this expression? You just have to do double distributive property or FOIL, first outers, inners, last. Make sure you add together your outers and your inners. 4M plus negative 16M is a negative 12M, which matches our original one, choice three. In question number four, you're just solving the equation. So you want to do the distributive property first, remembering that a negative times a negative is a positive or plus eight. Go ahead and solve the rest of that. You get X equals two. In question number five, what is the value of the F of negative three? So here's where negative three is, go straight up from there until you hit the graph. And that is at positive six, which is choice one. In question number six, remember that domain means X, range means Y. So just type this into your Y equals. So Y equals X squared, and then hit second in table. It gives you your X values, it gives you your Y values. So remember, these are all the X values. So what they wanna know is what Y values correspond to those numbers in the table. Well, when you type it into the, into the second in table, you get 0, 1, 16, and 81 for those X values, which is choice two. Again, double distributive property or FOIL, first outers, inners, last, just try each one until you get the what you started off with. There's no X term here. That's because a negative 10X plus 10X is zero X. Those just cancel out. In question number eight, how does the graph change from Y equals X squared to Y equals X minus two squared plus three? Well, this minus two just to the X term makes it go two units to the right. Adding three to the whole thing makes it go three units up. You could just graph the original and graph this one and see how they changed. In question number nine, they have this type of question a lot. Um, Lizzie has 30 coins, so there's 30 coins total. So dimes plus quarters equals 30 total. And each dime is worth 10 cents, each quarter is worth 25 cents. So when we're talking about the value of it, it's 480. So that's, that would be choice number two. In question number 10, Gretchen has $50 that she can spend on the fair, at the fair. Ride tickets cost $1.25 each. Game tickets cost $2 each. She wants to go on a minimum of 10 rides. So a minimum means that is the lowest number. So it could be equal to that or greater than that. And play at least 12 games. You have to be at least 16 years old to drive a car. So that is equal to 12 or more than 12. Um, which system of inequalities represents that? It would be choice two. We have $1.25 times the number of rides plus $2 times the number of games. She has less, she can spend less than or equal to $50 because that's all that she has. She wants to ride more than or equal to 10 rides and play more than or equal to 12 games. In question number 11, what you want to do is you want to graph these, all right? And they want to know which statement is true. So we have the f of x, we have the g of x, and we have the h of x. So which statement is true? It's choice four, the y-intercept for the g of x, that's right here, that's at three, is greater than the y-intercept for both the f of x and the h of x. The y-intercept for f of x is one right here, and the y-intercept is right here for um, h of x, which is negative one. So three is bigger than one and negative two. In question number 12, this one's a hard one. Um, you have to know some of these and what the, how they set this one up to convert it is they have the smaller over the larger. So four quarts, quarts are smaller than gallons. 
pints are smaller than quarts, cups are smaller than pints, teaspoons are smaller than tablespoons. Which ratio is written incorrectly? Well, it would be this one because this is the only one that does a bigger thing over a smaller thing. This was a very, very hard question because if you didn't know which one was bigger, you would have no clue which one it is. But a tablespoon is smaller than a cup. So this one is reversed, it's flipped. That one's very hard. In question number 13, if Y equals this and Z equals this, which polynomial is equivalent to two times Y plus Z? So the first thing that we wanna do is this part. This is actually Y plus Z, all right? Y plus Z gives you three X cubed plus two X squared minus 17. And then you have to multiply the whole thing by two. So take and distribute, distribute, distribute. We end up with this answer, which is choice one. In question number 14, an outdoor club conduct, conducted a survey of the 60 males, 45 stated that they prefer to snowboard. What is the relative frequency of those that prefer to ski? So that tells you how many like snowboarding, but the remaining people are the number that like to ski. So the first thing that you need to do is subtract. 60 people minus the 45 snowboarders gives you 15 skiers. 15 skiers out of the total of 60, top divided by bottom is 0.25 or 25%. In question number 15, when you go to graph this correctly, how should the points be drawn? Well, an or equal to represents a closed dot, a greater than is an open dot. So it's a closed circle at 315 and an open circle at 313. How do you know if it's choice three or four? You have to take those X values and sub them in, all right? When you take this three and sub it in here, it would be equal to, so three times or five times three is 15 here. When you go to sub in a three here, a number that's bigger than three, it's gonna be bigger then. So that's gonna be that. In question number 16, if the f of x equals this, which equation can be used to determine the zeros of the function? Just graph them and see which one matches again, all right? You're looking for which one matches. These two are the same exact graph. In question number 17, which statements um, regarding the function e are correct? So you wanna know which statements are true. Each day um, at a local dog shelter spends an average of 240 per dog. So 240 times the number of dogs. And then there's this $30. Well, that plus $30 represents all their other expenses. So maybe like water and electricity and maybe heat, things like that. So which statements are true? It would be one and four are true. X represents the number of dogs and 30 represents the non-food expenses. So that'd be choice two because one and four are correct. In question number 18, which point is not in the solution set? So when we go, when we look at this equation, you see that two things are equal to each other. We're just going to solve it and get it in terms of Y. So we want to get this Y equals all by itself. Then you can type it into your Y equals and hit second and table. These are your X values. Remember all points are written X comma Y. So when you do second and table, this is the only point that is not in that table. All three of these other points would show up in the table. In question number 19, this one's a little bit tricky as well, just because of how it's worded. Based on the graph, the solutions to the equation f of x equals g of x are which ones? Notice that you have this absolute value graph and this exponential graph, and they cross right here, and they cross right here. So there's two solutions. Um, based on the graph, the solutions, just because it says solutions to, um, it's just like having the x-intercepts. Remember, x-intercepts are solutions. So where is this at the x value? Where is this at the x value? That's what they really want to know, which is choice three. That one's a hard one. In question number 20, for the sequence, negative 27, negative 12, 3, 18, the expression that best defines where the nth term is, um, is represented by which thing? Well, what you're doing each time, you're starting at negative 27, that's your first value. So that's your a sub one. And then you're adding 15 each time to the previous one. So you have the a sub one plus your common difference times 
the n minus one. In question number 21, the data obtained from a random sample of track athletes show that as the foot size of the athlete decreased, the average running speed decreased. Which statement is best supported by the data? So which one is true? Well, the only one that you can assume is true is choice three, that there is some sort of correlation between foot size and running speed, right? You can't prove these other ones to be true just from that statement. In question number 22, um, which, set, which system of equations would yield the same solution as the system below? Notice that in the purple here, I crossed off all these second ones. I crossed off all these second ones because they are literally the same exact equation written over and over and over and over again. So I could care less. Those are all the same. So what we're really making is we want to know this one right here is equal to which of the top solutions. Well, if you take number three and you divide it by two, so divide by two, divide by two, divide by two, you get that original equation of x minus x minus y equals three. So that would be choice three. In question number 23, which of the three situations given below is best modeled by an exponential? Um, so an exponential is some sort of multiplying. So a bacteria culture doubles, that's being multiplied by two, and the population of a town declines by 5%. So you're multiplying, all right, um, to get it lower and lower and lower. This one would be adding because it's growing by an inch each every four days. So you'd be adding one inch every four days. Um, that's adding, that's not multiplying. So one and three are multiplying. So choice four is exponential. And then in question number 24, the length, width, and height of a rectangular box are represented by those three things. When the volume is expressed as a polynomial in standard form, which, what is the coefficient of the second term? They expect you to know this ahead of time. Volume equals length times width times height. Um, so if you didn't know that, you wouldn't be able to solve the question. All right. So we need to multiply these three things together. I chose to multiply the two binomials together first, and I got 15x squared minus 13x minus 6. And then I chose to multiply by the 2x. So 2x times that answer, distribute, distribute, distribute. You get this trinomial. They want to know what's the coefficient of the second term. So that second term is negative 26, which is choice three. Um, what you needed to pass on this Regents exam was you needed to get 14 multiple choice questions correct in order to pass 14.